life goes on And so do we Just how we do it is no mystery Sometimes the answer can be hard to find That's something I will never be I'm always here for anything that you need Rain or shine, I'll be the one To share it all as life goes on We share it all as life goes on Uh-huh. I, uh, but no, Carol, dear, I won't be coming home for dinner tonight. It's a hospital board meeting. Look, why don't you and Barbara go out and have a good time? No, I meant together. <laughs> well, baby, uh, you two used to play together when you were little girls. You didn't. Your mother told me you did. Bye, Carol. <laughs> Get ready to earn your money, Jeffrey Milstein, room one. Jeffrey's back. Okay. What is it this time? Who knows with him? It could be anything from a split lip to a split personality. <laughs> well, Jeffrey? Hello, Dr. Weston. Nurse Todd, you're looking especially lovely and antiseptic today. Thank you. All right, come on. What's up? My pulse is racing. I'm experiencing free-floating anxiety and occasional outburst of irritability. <laughs> and so it begins. Wait, uh, Jeffrey, this sounds like it could be stress. Anything unusual going on in your life? Not really, Dr. Weston. School is fine. Social life is fine. Tomorrow I defend my title in the Miami Junior Chess Tournament, a major source of my self-esteem. My diet is fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let's back up to this chess tournament thing. The chess tournament, of course. You're a genius, Dr. Weston. Well, I wouldn't say genius. Ditto. <laughs> You can't imagine the pressure I'm under. For the last six years, I've won this chess tournament. And with each year, it gets harder. When you're the best, there's always someone out there trying to take your place. I feel like that aging gunfighter who never knows if his next draw will be his last. I use that old West analogy in deference to you, Nurse Todd. Jeffrey, dear, uh, uh, what you're forgetting here is that chess is just a game. Go out there and have a little fun. Don't take it so seriously. I'll try. You'll see. You should have a good time. But first, I'm going to go home and shave all my body hair on the off chance that aerodynamics plays some small role in chess. <laughs> Sorry you had to hear that, Nurse Todd. <laughs> Grilled sea bass, very dry. No butter, no salt. Ribs, fries, and another pina colada. <laughs> That's death. You just ordered death. <laughs> uh, no, excuse me, we didn't order wine. Compliments of the gentleman at the bar. What do you think? He's cute. Barbara, look deeper. <laughs> He's real cute. Now, what I see is a man who is well-read, enjoys foreign films, and has a deep appreciation for German expressionism. I'd like to see him in cutoffs. <laughs> Me too. Look, Barbara, he's blind. Hi, can I join you? We'd be delighted. I'm Alan Hudson. This is Barbara Weston, and I'm her sister, Carol. <laughs> they get to know you. I have an arrangement with the bartender. Anytime a good-looking lady comes in, he lets me know. Apparently, I just hit the daily double. <laughs> so how'd you get here tonight? You didn't drive. But what? It's okay. I take cabs everywhere. Between you and me, I have a hunch they take me miles out of my way to up the fare. They claim it's the scenic route, but a lot of good that does me. <laughs> That's my beeper. Gotta call my office. In the meantime, why don't you write your phone number down? I'll have my secretary put it into Braille. Barbara, uh, give me a pen. He wants my number. Your number? What makes you think he wants to call you and not me? 
because for once, cuteness doesn't count. This is a blind man. <laughs> that little hair flip move of yours is going to get you nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and you can forget leaning over the table for the butter. <laughs> Alan, I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. We weren't sure whose phone number you wanted. Actually, now, before I... you say anything, just remember, this is Carol. <laughs> And this is Barbara. I just can't believe it. He chose a dinner roll over me. Now, here's a surprise. It's Saturday night, Barbara's out, and Carol's home with Daddy. Charlie, go a little easy here. Carol's feeling hurt. Both the girls met this man at the same time. He asked Barbara out. Daddy, it wasn't just any man. He was blind. Hold it. Let me get this straight. A blind guy turned you down? Does the phrase hit bottom mean anything to you? <laughs> All right, Charlie. Daddy, I don't understand this. I mean, Alan's blind. He's vulnerable. The man needs sensitivity and compassion, and he chooses Barbara. I mean, why would he choose Barbara? Maybe he doesn't want whining. <laughs> you can hear whining. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. He felt my face and everything. Houston, we have isolated the problem. <laughs> some sort of Porky's Film Festival you should be attending? Hey, I can take a hint. Daddy, you don't think there's anything pathetic about you and me being home together on a Saturday night, do you? No, honey, not at all. Come on, don't listen to what Charlie says. Well, you got a date, got to go. Enjoy yourself, man. Dreyfus. Good night, Alan. I had a nice time. I had a good time, too. I'll just leave you two alone. Barbara, I'd like to see you again. I don't think that's such a great idea. Good night, Alan. Uh, Alan, wait a second. Barbara, may I speak to you for a moment? Barbara, what are you doing? That man just asked you out for another date, and you said no? I do that a lot. Well, you can't do that with him. <laughs> Why not? He's blind, he's blind, he's blind! <laughs> I just don't want to see the guy again, okay? Why not? Because there's something about him. He is not the same guy we met at the restaurant. He's rude, he's not very thoughtful. He just gives me the creeps. Oh, this is something. The man is visually impaired. He's never seen a leaf or a sunset. The gift of sight has been taken from him. And you, my sister, don't want to see him again because he just gives you the creeps? <laughs> right. <laughs> Good night, Alan. Alan, oh. I'm so sorry. You must be so hurt. Don't be upset with Barbara. It's just that she's young and, and, and new to the world of the, the unsighted. You're a very unusual girl, Carol. I could tell from the moment we met you were... Sensitive? Yeah, okay. It's so interesting that you should choose that word. Carol, what would you say to you and me going out? Oh, Alan... Feel my happiness. <laughs> All right. Jeffrey? What happened? Freak accident. I was moving on to Queen's Bishop 3 when I heard a snap. My own fault, Dr. Weston. I didn't stretch before the match. <laughs> Let me take a look at this. Not if you'll merely write a note excusing me from the tournament, I'll be on my way. Jeffrey, there is nothing wrong with this arm. Maybe this, uh, fiver? Did you take a second look? Jeffrey, come on. What's going on? What I've been fearing for the last six years has finally come to pass. I met my match, Dr. Weston. His name is Lenya Volanovich, a nine-year-old Russian immigrant. Oh, 
The good, huh? I knew I was in trouble when during the opening handshake he said, I must break you. <laughs> I managed to play him even up until this point, but he's got me in trouble, Dr. Weston. Look. <laughs> All right, now, refresh my memory. Little horsey hops one way once and then two turns the other way. Dr. Weston, if I lose this match, I won't be able to live with myself. I'll never be able to climb up on the sink and look at myself in the mirror again. Well, Jeffrey, have you talked to your father about this? Yes. Then what, what did he say? Same thing he always says. Leave me alone. Go talk to Dr. Weston. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah. This is what I think. Uh, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And uh, winners never quit, and quitters never win. Your words are powerful. Well. Clichés, yes. But their naive logic has struck a chord. Well, I'm going back to the tournament. Thanks to you, I shall be a lean, mean chess machine. That's the way to talk. There you go. And have yourself some fun. Dr. Weston, I am going to kick some Bolshevik butt. <laughs> I was walking around with my eyes closed. <laughs> I was trying to live in Alan's world to learn what it's like to be blind. I wonder if he's annoying everyone around him to learn what it's like to live in your world. <laughs> Very funny, Barbara. Leave it to you to make fun of those imitating the blind. <laughs> Don't you think you're going a little overboard? Oh, Barbara, I'm just so excited about my date with Alan. I got us front row tickets to the symphony. They cost me $100, but I don't care. I want tonight to be perfect. And then after the concert, I made reservations at a wonderful restaurant at the beach. Great food, sounds of the ocean lapping against the shore, smell of the sea breeze. Coming, Alan! I want him to know he's at the right house. Hi, Alan. Carol. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Alan, I have the most exciting evening planned for us. We start off with a symphony, and then we... Cheryl, to... honey, I really don't like classical music. Oh, oh okay. Well, that's no problem. I mean, who cares about a silly old symphony anyway? Carol. The real highlight of this evening is dinner. I've made reservations at a wonderful restaurant at the beach. Let me guess. Waves crashing against the shore, seagulls overhead, mood music, yada, 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 yada. You're right. Why eat at the shore when we can eat... Inland. <laughs> Carol, a second ago, you... Now, will you excuse me for a second? This is exactly the kind of creepy stuff I was talking about. What? You plan this great evening, you're all excited about it, and this guy just dumps all over you. Barbara, you are looking at this from a sighted point of view. <laughs> spent almost 30 minutes in Alan's world. I know what he's feeling. And what about what you're feeling? Barbara, you're missing the point. The man has never seen a leaf. He's never seen a sunset. He's a fragile, vulnerable soul. Hey, can we hurry it up? My clothes are going out of style. <laughs> Laverne, did Alan call? I thought he's with you two. He never showed up. Oh, God, I am so afraid something terrible happened to him. After all, he is blind. <laughs> Don't worry, now. He's blind. People can be very resourceful. We had one back in Hickory. His name was Dooley Tippett. <laughs> Took an old bloodhound, turned him into a good guide dog. <laughs> Things worked out real well till one day that dog spotted him a rabbit tearing into the woods and took Dooley on a ride of his life. <laughs> oh, Alan, there you are. I was so worried about you. I got your message. What's the emergency? Uh, well, darling, we were supposed to have lunch together so you could meet my father. Oh, was that today? Oh, it's okay, Alan. We can have lunch with Daddy some other time. Maybe. I just don't want to lock myself into anything right now. It's all right, honey. No, no need to apologize. Carol, honey, he didn't apologize. <laughs> anyway, Alan, I'm glad you're here now because there's a couple of people I'd like to introduce you to. This is my father. Hello. And this is his nurse, Laverne. <laughs> I'm not happy with this.
My father is a tall man with a gentle face, while the Vern is pretty, dedicated to her work, and hails from the South. Yeah, I gotta go. Carol, are you coming or what? Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> yes, sir, you work some wonders with your eldest there. <laughs> Daddy, how was your day? Well, I met your sister's boyfriend. Well, let's face it, Daddy. When Carol drives down the highway of men, she always gets off at the idiot exit. <laughs> you gotta tell her to stop seeing this guy. Oh, 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 Barbara, Barbara. Well, you've got a few things to learn about being a father. I mean, if I tell Carol I don't like this guy, she's gonna want him even more. Daddy, that's silly. That's the truth. That's the way it happens between fathers and daughters. That's why I never told you how much I disliked that guy with the earring you were dating a couple of months ago. Jack? Oh, he was a great guy. I gotta give him a call. No, a... I know I'm gonna regret this, but I am gonna have to talk to Carol about this. I mean, this is gonna be not easy. I... All right, listen, Carol. Alan did the most terrible thing today. Here I thought I understood the man, but there turns out that there is a whole other side of him that I never knew existed. What happened? I took him to the library to show him where I work, and as we were leaving, I caught him trying to sneak out with a book from the Braille section. I mean, what if my boss had been there? I could have been fired, and he just shrugged the whole thing off. Well, honey, I don't blame you for being angry. I mean, I'd be angry, too. Angry? Oh, Daddy, I've never felt closer to Alan. <laughs> what? Well, this wasn't just the simple taking of a book. This was a desperate cry for help. What? <laughs> Next stop, Moron Parkway. <laughs> Carol, honey, listen, hey, we have to talk. What is it, Daddy? I don't think you're seeing Alan clearly. What do you mean? I mean, he's... seems a little inconsiderate and selfish. He doesn't treat you very well. Daddy, he's blind. He's never seen a leaf. He's never seen a sunset. Honey, I know that. I, I, the question is, would you continue dating this guy if he weren't blind? You know, I would expect this kind of thing from Barbara, but coming from you, Daddy, it almost makes me want him more. Carol, all I'm saying is, make sure that you are judging the man and not the disability. You know, it's people like you who used to condemn the blind to insane asylums. Who did that? Nobody ever did that! Gee, yeah. Thanks. Okay, Laverne, that takes care of the Henderson boy. Who's Jeffrey? Well, Dr. Weston, may I have a moment of your time? Aha! That's a smile, Jeffrey. This is good. I am guessing that you won the chess tournament and Lonya is sulking in some Siberian daycare center. Actually, Dr. Weston, the last was mine. Ah, oh, Jeffrey, I'm sorry. Don't be. You know, Dr. Weston, in the last tortured moments of that match, as I met Lenya's cold Carpathian stare, I broke into an incredible flop sweat. And then the word I feared the most came floating across the room. Checkmate. Dazed and defeated, I laid my king on its side and waited for the earth to swallow me up. Now let me guess, Jeffrey. Nothing happened. You knew, Dr. Weston? <laughs> hey, I'm a pro. I couldn't believe it. I lost and nothing happened. Sure, there were a few titters and hoots, but then my parents have never been especially supportive. Well, Jeffrey, I think you're feeling a great sense of relief. Eh? Now that the burden of number one has been lifted from you, and Lanya is the one looking over his shoulder. Ahead of me again. That's why I come here, despite the fact that you're not as well-published as many of your peers. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Weston. It's a pleasure, sir. Bye, Nurse Todd. Bye-bye, Jeffrey. Ah, uh, Laverne, I wish you could have been here to see what happened between Jeffrey and me. It's one of those special moments that makes me so glad to be a doctor. Yeah, well, you better get yourself in a room, too. The Carter boy's been a-puking his guts out. <laughs> Isn't it romantic being at the restaurant where we first met? Yeah. Except I thought we were going to be alone. What's 
Barbara doing here? <laughs> you. <laughs> Carol, honey, this is a little embarrassing, but I forgot my wallet. Can you cover this? Well, darling, of course I can, but this is the third time this week. You know, Alan, you really should remember your wallet. I mean, it has your ID in it. Whoop, whoop. Nag alert, nag alert. Now, Alan, I don't think that was called for. I was only... I'm sorry. That wasn't you talking. That was years of pain. That was a cry for help. I understand. We have some excellent desserts tonight. We'll pass on dessert. Just coffee for the two of us. Oh, well, now, I don't know, Alan. That strawberry tart looks interesting. You can't have it. Why not? Hey, don't start chunking up on me. What? Chunk up. Chunk up, you know. Alan. I'll be back. Alan, if I'm doing something wrong, I want you to tell me. Look, I just don't want you to feel you can start porking up just because I can't see you. Okay, this is good. We're talking honestly. We're talking openly. If I want to spend the day with a blimp, I'd go to a football game. Never seen a leaf, never seen a sunset. Never seen a leaf, never seen a sunset. Hey, Carol, come on. Conversation like this I can get from your airhead sister. Now, wait a minute, Alan. I will not have you talking about Barbara that way. She is a good, decent human being, and she deserves to be treated with respect. Would you just pay the bill so we can go now, Carol? And so do I. You know something? My father was right. I haven't been seeing you clearly. I don't care if you are blind. You are a rude, obnoxious man. You may be disabled, Alan, but your disability is not your blindness. It's your personality. And I don't want you in my life anymore. Alan, this is me. This is nothing. That's what I'm leaving you with. You are a bad blind man. <laughs> I'm usually very sensitive. <laughs>